that for number five. Probably this wire. I just
Norwell. Oh, okay, sorry.
I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Uh, this is a house that's dedicated to the Lord at least for the next two weeks. And uh, by God's grace, you have made it here. You could have been somewhere else tonight, right? right? You could have just stayed at home. For some of you, you could have uh, continued on working. But I know at least of one person who took a two weeks off from work so that she could be here every night. It's because she's bringing a friend every night. And so we are truly delighted to see each and every one of you here night after night after night. This is our fourth night. Let me see the hands of those who have been here for the last four nights. Praise the Lord. How about for the, for the last three, three nights? All right, I see your hands. I see your hands. You know, you have, you have chosen to be in the place where God is worshipped, where his words is being proclaimed. And you know, I want you to picture Jesus smiling right now. He is delighted in having his children here. And so I welcome you on his behalf, in behalf of Jesus, who is, uh, who is present right now by his Holy Spirit. And you know what? As his name is lifted up, his promise is he will draw. He will draw all men unto himself. And so I believe that you will all, we will all experience a closer walk with Jesus tonight. As we go through the program, as we sing songs, as we do the prayers, and as we listen to God's word proclaimed tonight. I have something special here. This is, you know, a special gadget, a special equipment. Could you see it from where, where you are sitting? Could you see it? What is this? A tablet. A ta not a tablet of stone that was, uh, like, that was given to Moses, but, but this is a tablet that uh, could be very useful for somebody. And this will be given away when? Can it? Given away, not tonight, but tomorrow. Tomorrow, and this will be handed out to someone who has registered his name with the registration people there. Because if you have not registered, then there's no possibility for your name to be, to be chosen, right? So if you haven't registered yet, please do register because uh, you might be the one who would be blessed, not lucky, blessed enough to receive uh, this special gift coming from the Foot Footprints of Hope campaign. And so it will be given away tomorrow, but there are other gifts to be given away tomorrow as well, and we won't be telling you about that. But this will be the special gift that will be given to you. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, I would like once again to welcome all of you to Footprints of Hope, Day 4. Would you please stand for prayer? It's a privilege to talk to the Lord. It is a good time that we have tonight, and uh, we'll invite, you know, the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, like this. Let us pray. Our God in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given to us. Thank you because we have the privilege to take your name and receive the blessing of the Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit among us. Give us that strength. We know that there is only one way to go. This is Jesus, the truth and life. Convert our hearts. Give us a new heart. Be merciful to us. Bless us and cause your face to shine upon us and this peaky patch of Slimmer. Give us that strength that may be known on earth and Calgary and everywhere. Your salvation among all, all nations, in Jamaica, all America, and, and Europe, everywhere who needs it. Please, Lord, come to our lives and give us that strength that only comes from you. In Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless. You may be seated.
Is it okay if I give a quick testimony? Um, I woke up early one Sunday morning and I took a, a busload of people heading towards Kingston. I was extremely tired that morning, so I decided that I was going to go through a small town in St. Anne's called Steertown. For those of you who are Jamaicans, you'll know who I'm talking about, where I'm talking about. And on that morning, because I was so tired, I decided I was going to take that route and just get some sleep. I clearly, clearly remember turning off the main road onto that road to get me through Steertown. And that was all I remembered. When I woke up to the loud explosion, I found myself looking over into a precipice. And in seconds, I found myself on the road. See, your grace and mercy brought me through. And I'm living this moment because of you. So I want to thank you. And I want to praise you too. Your grace and the mercy brought me through. Your You, you and I should die 
<laughs> but you see grace grace and mercy said oh no oh no 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 you see we've already paid the price oh yes friends i thank you lord for this day that i'm standing here it's because grace and mercy came around and rescued rescued me Anybody want to praise him too? Cause your grace, oh, thank you, Lord. Your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace and mercy. So we'll be doing this um, very nice chorus. I think we all might know it. We might not have the lyrics, but victory is mine. Victory is mine. So we'll do that chorus and, and, and get that going there. Then after which we'll do a hymn, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. So victory is mine. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I draw Satan to get me behind, a victory today is mine. Joy, joy is mine, joy is mine. face tomorrow because he lives all fair is God. God sent his son. God sent his son. They
awake. Let me try it again. Good evening, everyone. You are half awake. Good evening, everybody. It is a joy to be here with you. Now that you're fully awake, we're going to be getting right on into it. But uh, just, is there anybody here? This is your first night here since we started on Friday evening. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Welcome on behalf of the entire team. We love to have wonderful people in our presence, you know. And you almost made me get a heart attack because you've been away from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But my heart is right in this right place now. Is there anybody here you haven't missed an evening since Friday evening? Could I see your hands? Great, great, wonderful. Tomorrow evening, I want to ask you to bring, bring a friend with you. Bring the family with you. If you know somebody who's looking for a miracle... That's tomorrow evening. If you have been looking and searching uh, tomorrow evening, I'll tell you how to get God to do the miracle that you've been waiting for. So tomorrow evening, uh, I want to talk about three steps to your miracle. Uh, you can't miss it. There are some folk who have been praying and saying, God, I want you to do a miracle in my life. Tomorrow evening is the evening that we're going to talk about that, and I really want you not to miss that. And so we'll be having a special prayer tomorrow evening at the end of our service. And I want you to be here. Is there anybody here who believes that God still hears and answers prayer? Can I hear you say amen? amen. God is still in the miracle working business. Last night we talked about uh, when two worlds collide. We talked about the world of our vocation, our daily life, the stuff we do in order to survive, the things we do to put food on our table, uh, uh, oftentimes um, the calling of God in our lives conflicts and collides with the world of our busy thoroughfares. But somebody here ought to know that when we come down to kiss a dying pillow, the job won't help us, the money can't help us, the friends can't help us. We only have one hope for these times, and his name is Jesus. And so we began on Friday evening talking about an urgent text message for this generation. 
God has an urgent word for this generation. We talked a little more about that on Saturday night. But tonight I want to talk about stop the world I want to get off. Stop the world I want to get off. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray, even for those here and those joining us online, our loving God. All of our lives you have been faithful. Your hand of protection has been over us. You've blessed us in ways we couldn't even dream. Even the fact, God, that we are able to walk on our own two feet is a blessing from heaven. That we are able to see from our own eyes, to speak. We are able to move about and we thank you. God, sometimes we take these things for granted. But tonight we pause again to thank you for all the blessings of this life. Now we ask for one more blessing, that you would sit down beside us. You would stand up in this podium. Because God, we want to hear a word from heaven. Our lives are filled with challenges. Our world seems to be spinning out of control. And so we pray that you would steady our feet, you would steady our minds, you would open our hearts to understand when we would have come to the end of our sitting in your presence. I pray, Almighty God, a blessing for everyone here for the glory of your name and the saving of our souls. We ask in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. This earth, I am told, spins on its axis from west to east, producing glorious sunrise and amazing sunset, spinning at the inconceivable speed of 1,038 miles per hour. And yet you look at it and you can't see it moving. Isn't God amazing? So amazing is God that the stuff that we take for granted, if our universe is, is, is so tiny in comparison to God's vast creation. Our planet is but a tiny dot in this vast creation. And yet, it is on this planet that God has focused his attention. He never sent his son to die for Pluto, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. He never sent his son to die for any other planet but this one. You see, in the beginning, it was God's divine intent when he made Adam and Eve. He said uh, he was making them in his own likeness. And in the prayer of Jesus, you ought to see the intent that God had for your life and mine and for the rest of us. He said, let it be on earth even as it is in heaven. There's a line in the prayer that says, thy will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. Somebody ought to say amen. But the devil, the devil doesn't like God's will. The devil doesn't like happy people. The devil doesn't like happy families. And so I listened to your newscast today uh, on, it, it was repeated several times that since uh, 2019 to 2021, 6,200 or 6,200 young people died from overdose. Between 2019 and 2021. And what staggers my mind is that they said that 2022 and 2023, it's on the increase. They talk about the challenge to Gen Zers and millennials, the challenge to young people. The devil is after the best that we have. And I don't know why, but there seem to be lives running out of control. There seem to be not just a young people's problem, but don't you know that middle age sometimes commits suicide? Don't you know that multimillionaires sometimes find their world spinning out of control because we have a sin problem? And tonight I want to go uh, to our screen as we talk about that. Our world is spinning out of control. Control And as uh, we get together, um, let me just back up a little bit. And the man would say, wheel and come again, sir. I'm not a DJ. I'm just uh, a little country boy. Are you listening to me? It says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Standing out from our spinning world 
is the trustworthy word of the living God. While our world spins out of control, while our world is spinning faster than we can see it, and uh, tell the devil if he uh, doesn't get out of the way, I'll just get mad in the pulpit. Are you listening to me? Uh, and so this spinning world, this world that's moving so fast as we seek to educate our children, as I told you last evening, uh, in the mind of every honest, decent, dignified person is the desire for a life that is satisfying, a life that is worthwhile living. We dream of living our lives. We dream of setting plans. We dream of spending our days, our final days, with, with some joy. And since you don't know how your day is going to end, since you don't know how your life is going to end, since you don't know whether or not this is going to be your last week. No, I didn't plan to stand up your blood pressure. Calm down. Calm down. You might not die this week, so take a deep breath. <sighs> Did I hear someone say, thank you, Lord. The truth is, beloved, life was given to us without our asking for it. It's a gift of God. What we do with our lives is our gift back to God. Can I say it again? Life was given to us as a gift from God, as an investment by God in your well-being. God has a vested interest in your total well-being, in your business life, in your social life, in your love life, in your church life. I just said something because sometimes we dissect and decompartmentalize our lives. And so we talk about our social life as against our church life. Now, I'm a country boy from the Caribbean. And and uh, they, they say that cats have. All right, so you're here too. But I don't believe that. A car hit a cat. I say, all right, cat, don't worry. That's only one life. You have eight more. But it's still dead. One life. So, so, so when you talk about your business life and your social life and your church life. May I ask you a question? In the spinning world, if God has a problem with your business life and if he sees that your business life is out of touch with his word and there is reason for him to send your business life to hell, what will happen to your church life? There's a song that says, I only have one life to live. I only have one life to live. And then in this one life, you, you worry yourself every day. And Bob Marley said, don't you worry about a thing now. Because every little thing, now don't throw me out of church. I haven't become a backslider. Are you listening to me? I'm just pulling a line to connect you with stuff. Listen to me carefully. We only have one life. And God has a vested interest in our total well-being. With the over 7 billion of us on this tiny planet, it's not the birds and the flowers. It's not the buildings that's giving trouble down here. Hear the preacher. I told you on our opening evening, I still believe that Canada is one of the cleanest countries. I've Keep it that way. I've seen some beautiful spaces. I've, I've gone to some wonderful places. But there's trouble in every land. In this spinning world, there is a scream. There is the cry, stop the world. I want to get off. The world seems to be spinning out of control. I will remember the tragedy that I'm using as a launching pad. I was in New York City under a tent. As a matter of fact, the tent was still standing when the Twin Towers came tumbling down. I'd gone up there on one of those buildings. There was a fancy restaurant on the 92nd floor. My friend took me up there. We had a wonderful time. Can you imagine they take me out to eat at 1 o'clock in the morning? And the trouble is they had no dumplings on the menu. I shouldn't have gone. But I was trying to be, you know, a good uh, friend. Nobody would have thought that the entire world would change in a matter of days. Who would have thought that, that, that planes could be used as a weapon of mass destruction? 
that the lady who was the treasurer of the campaign and uh, the issue is she sprained her ankle just in that week leading up to the Twin Tower disaster. And she called me and said, Pastor, I didn't want to miss any of the meeting. Why did God allow me to sprain my ankle? And she was quarreling with God. But the day after the disaster, she was crying, thanking God for a sprained ankle. Because for 18 years, she worked at the, the Twin Towers on the 34th floor, never missing work. Had it not been for a sprained ankle, she would have been at work. God sometimes orchestrates. He doesn't cause suffering, but he will use even our suffering to save our lives. He doth not willingly afflict. Lamentations 3 and verse 23, 22, 23 said, The Lord God doth not willingly afflict nor grieve the sons of men. It is of the Lord's mercy while we are not consumed. But he's able to use even life's unfortunate stuff on our spinning world while our lives are spinning out of control to bring us to our senses. I've seen folk crying over their relatives and there's no closure. The attacks began at 8.42 a.m. local time when a plane flew in, the, in one of the trade centers. 18 minutes later, a second plane plunged in the second tower. Shortly afterwards, another crash in the Pentagon. Sinful mind whose lives were out of control caused the death of thousands, maimed many, and caused untold grief and sorrow. On our spinning world, this planet, this tiny planet spinning on its axis as it slings its way around the sun, with all of its sinfulness, all of its vice, there's a God in glory who one day will stop the spinning as it moves into, I, hear me carefully, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with our world? You may say, preacher, I'm okay. The truth is the problem is not with the building, nor the plants, nor the flowers, nor the bees. The problem is with the heart of humankind, your heart and my heart. And the word of God is straightforward. He said in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. We don't like for folk to, hear me carefully, we like to think of ourselves as okay. The word of God is clear. And he wants to give us a new heart. There's something wrong with this one. There's something wrong with us. We have been affected and infected by the disease of sin. And there's only one cure for sin. There's only one cure for the problem of a world spinning out of control. And, uh, what's wrong with us? Hear God as he speaks. He's the divine surgeon. He's the great clinical psychiatrist and psychologist. What's wrong with us? Hear from the heart of the creator. He said, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws and changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. God says, I made you for better than this. I don't care what you think about your life. God planned you for better than this. You may feel that you are at the pinnacle of success and yet higher than the highest human thoughts can reach is God's ideal for all his children. You may feel satisfied, but as long as sin reigns in our hearts, sin will bring us from the pinnacle of success to the, pinnacle, the, the plummet of despair. He said the earth is defiled. Told you on the opening evening, when a man could go into the schoolroom of innocent kindergarten children, leaving many dead, something is wrong with our world. One of the saddest stories I've ever read from North America is that of a youngster hooked on drugs, and when his mother refused to give him money to feed his drug habit, he stabbed his own mother to death. Place her in the basement and while her body was decomposing in the basement he and his friends were having a wild party in the living room what's wrong with us 
the heart is deceitful. What's wrong with us? Even church folk, have you ever noticed that the folk who don't know God, they have no reservation in living for the devil? But those of us in church, we only give God a little bit of our time. I can preach tonight whether you like it, yes or no. Listen to me. The devil has his own and they gave him full time service. But those of us for whom God has been so good, we find it hard to give him full time service. And we wonder why our lives are spinning out of control. I want to tell you, he's either going to be God of all or he will not be God at all. The earth is defiled under the inhabitants because we have transgressed the laws of God. We have changed the ordinance. We have broken the everlasting covenant. Go back to Eden and see what God planned for man and look in our modern world and see the direction that the world is going in. We have changed the everlasting covenant. And he continues. He says, not only have we changed the everlasting covenant and... Uh, it's a good thing that I have a Bible since this thing won't move. Uh, then let me move. Oh, finally, you've made up your mind to move. <laughs> Isaiah 59 and 13, he said, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and turning away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Listen to me carefully. There's no safety, not even simply in being a church member. You and I have got to know God for ourselves. We've got to have a living, transforming relationship with the Almighty God. Are you listening to me? In transgressing and lying against the Lord, in departing from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering words from the heart of falsehood. Judgment is turned away backward and justice stands afar off and the street is filled with violence. Truth faileth and he that turneth away himself from evil becomes a prey. Look at this. If you try to live a decent life at your workplace, you become the object of attention. If you join the rank of those who are skullduggery and, and uh, unrefined and, 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 and uh, immoral and untruthful, you are praised. Misery loves company. Truth faileth. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. I'm running tonight. He said the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. Spinning out of control. And the transgression shall be heavy upon it. It shall fall and not rise again. This is God speaking. This is our sovereign creator. He said this earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. We slam the door in God's face. We flex our fists in the face of God. We trample on God's commandments with apparent impunity. We disregard the call of God. We disregard the call of mercy. And we feel that things will always continue as they are. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage because the transgression shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again what's wrong with us what's wrong with us God's diagnosis is clear we have transgressed his laws what's wrong with us God's diagnosis God's opinion matters listen to me carefully I know this is you know they call this a post truth generation because elected folk have grown so adept at lying. Lying has become their second nature. They lie in the morning and lie in the evening, lie on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. There was a time when governmental leaders around the world were truthful people. But now, like the little boy who didn't know his Bible well, they asked him to repeat his favorite text. He said, lying lips 
are abomination to the Lord, but a present help in the time of trouble. Listen to me. Some folk lie round the clock. They don't have to be in trouble to lie. It just becomes their nature to lie. Every time they open their mouth, here a lie, there a lie, everywhere a lie, lie. Are you listening to me? What is wrong with us? We have transgressed the laws of God, trampled on the rights of conscience, spitting on our dignity, wallowing our self-worth in the dust of time. What's wrong with us? We've lost our self-worth. We've lost our sense of purpose. We've lost meaning. What's wrong with us? We've grown so worldly that the, f the further we are removed from the life and times of Jesus is the less our lives reflect the will of God. What's wrong with us? Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he can save. He's still the same God. His hand is not short. He still works miracles. His ear is not heavy that he can hear. God is not hard of hearing. What's wrong with us? Hear the word of God. He says, but. Now let me back up a little bit. It says, behold, the Lord's hand is not short. His hand can reach down in the valley. Hebrews 7, I think 25 said, he is able to save to the uttermost. No matter how low you have fallen, the hand of God can reach down there and lift up the fallen. No matter how broken up your life may be, there is healing in the hand of God. But the Bible said, behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he can't save. Neither is his ear heavy, but... My English teacher taught me that that word but is not only a coordinating conjunction, but it introduces dissimilar thinking. So I, as a pastor, when I go to the church board and, and you hear the nice things first, and then comes the word but, you say, mm-hmm. Because whatever comes afterwards is intended to overthrow that which was said before. Pastor, he's a wonderful person, a nice man, pastor. But the Lord's hand is not short that he can save. But the Lord's ear is not heavy that he can't hear. But, but your iniquity. And God does not waste words. Earlier he spoke about transgression. Now he uses the word iniquity. Iniquity is deliberate wrongdoing. Ill iniquity is this bare face deliberately doing what you know God says you shouldn't do. But you do it anyhow. Your iniquities. The Lord God in speaking about the origin of sin said of Lucifer, you were perfect in all your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Deliberate wrongdoing, deliberate transgression, deliberate disobedience. You know what God says, but you said, I won't do it anyway. You hear the call of God. Iniquity is deliberate transgression. Your iniquity have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. One of the greatest challenge that you could ever find yourself in is to be in the midst of trouble and discover that you and God are not on speaking terms. And if you don't think it can happen, then go back to 1 Samuel 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, and 31, and you discover in the beginning of Saul's journey that God called him. It wasn't Samuel who chose him. God said to Samuel, he said, tomorrow I'll send you a man whom I have chosen to be king. And when Saul was coming the next day, and God orchestrated, God is amazing God. You know what God did to get Saul into Samuel's presence, God made him lose his donkey. But, but look here now. Of all the things, God made him lose a donkey. But you've got to understand their spiritual sensitivity. They were searching for the donkey, and they couldn't find the donkey. And they said, well, there's a prophet in town. Let's go ask him where to find our donkey. It just... 
it impacts my mind. Two things. That these youngsters had a sensitive spiritual mind. The sensitive nature of your spiritual ears will determine the quality of your discipleship. If you have a heart that is always yearning for God, if you have a mind that is sensitive to righteousness, you'll discover that you'll go to God for everything and anything. And that's a good thing to do. So they came to the prophet and they said, uh, uh. and so while, while they were going, the Lord said to the prophet, here he comes. The young man I spoke to you about, this is the one. He was tall from his shoulders up, taller than anybody else, and, and he was anointed. Let me run past this. So you, you can find it in 1 Samuel uh, uh, 8, 9, 10. He was divinely selected, divinely anointed, divinely appointed. And unlike any of the kings, he had the gift of prophecy. But listen to me, by the time you get to 1 Samuel 15, you hear God saying to, to the prophet, I'm sorry I made Saul king. Same one whom God blessed. It's trouble when we take God's blessings for granted. It's trouble when we, we enjoy the blessing and forget the blesser. And you won't find that word in the dictionary. I just created my own. When you enjoy the blessing of God and forget the God who gives the blessing, he can take back what he has given. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short. And here's Saul. God wouldn't speak to him. Listen to me. Can you understand the reason why God didn't speak with him? You find that in the 15th chapter, God said to him, Samuel, tell him that to obey is better than sacrifice. Tell him to obey my commandments is better than church life. Tell him to obey the will of God is better than anything. To obey is better than sacrifice. Could it be this evening that God is saying to someone here, obey my voice. To obey me is better than all the sacrifices you can ever make. The Philistines were coming. The war was stocked against him. And the Bible said, God would not speak to him neither by Urim or Thummim. And you wouldn't understand this. You are fancy Canadian citizens. He found an Obia woman. You don't know anything about Obia. You are just this fine Canadian, well-bred people of Alberta. You know nothing about Obia. Worse, you don't know a thing about Duppy. Listen to me carefully. The worst thing that could ever happen to you is to be in gut-wrenching trouble and discover that you and God are not on speaking terms because of your disobedience to the commandments of God. And the Bible said he lost his sons. I love Jonathan. He lost his children. And when you are out of touch with God, do you know how Saul died? The Bible said a man shot an arrow at a chance he wasn't aiming at Saul. But listen, the devil that you serve, he'll promise you life and give you death. The man just shot the arrow and guess who the arrow found? Unrepentant, disobedient Saul. Wounded! And when... He discovered that the Philistines were coming and he couldn't help himself. He said to his armor bearer, kill me. Don't let my enemies kill me. And the armor bearer said, I can't do it. You are God's anointed. I can't kill you. And the man who got the Holy Ghost from God committed suicide. Saul fell on his own sword. The Bible said, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. 
Our lives spins out of control because of our disobedience to God. It happened to church folk. It happened to those out of church. Listen to me. There's no salvation in simply being a church member. We've got to have a living relationship with the living God. And to love him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. What's wrong with our world? It's spinning out of control because we have transgressed the will of God. We have slammed the door shut in the face of God. Our iniquities have separated between us and God. And our sins have hid his face from us. And he will not hear. Our feet run to evil. We make haste to shed blood. Our, look at this. I shouldn't rush past that. Our thoughts, our thoughts of iniquity. Do you know what that reminds us of? You go back to Genesis. Before God sent the flood, he said, every imagination of the thoughts of the heart of man was evil continually. And God said, I will destroy them. You go down to Sodom. Listen to me, the two prime examples that Jesus gave. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when I'm about to come. Every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was evil continually. They transgress at will. They disobey without conscience. Go down to Sodom. And the Bible said, the sin that we are glorifying today got its name from the twin city. Brought about the destruction of the disobedient. He who trusts his own heart is a fool. The Bible said you can't trust your own mind. Because sin has infected and affected our minds. We think straight but not permanently. We struggle even to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's why we need a new heart. And only God can give that. The world is spinning out of control because the heart is unconverted. The world is spinning out of control because of persistent disobedience. And we ought to understand that persistent provocation. Hear me carefully. Persistent procrastination provokes the punishment of God. We persist in our dilly-dallying to doing God's will while time is running out. We sow to the wind and we reap the whirlwind. I'm running fast, so listen fast. The Lord God will come. Listen to me. I'm tired of funeral services. Today I was talking with one of my good friends back in Jamaica because her brother, uh, I, I, I am accustomed to burying almost every member of the family. But one of my elders died and they asked me first and so she called this morning pleading. I said, you know, I, I'd love to come but both funerals are starting at the same time and I would sometimes rush from one appointment to the next one miles apart. I thank God the Lord is coming. Psalm 15 verse 1 says, the mighty God sent us down here. Because God does knock us dead because of our sins. We feel that he doesn't have the power. The Bible said the mighty God. The Lord has spoken. And called the earth from the rising of the sun. To the going down of the same. He's sovereign creator. I don't care what Darwin says. I didn't come from any single cell stuff. I don't care what they say. We came from the hand of the living God. He's sovereign creator. He formed and fashioned man from the dust of the ground. He made the world in six days, blessed the seventh day. And forever he remains Lord God Almighty. The Bible said the Lord God, the mighty God, the Lord has spoken. He called the earth into existence. And the Bible declares in verse 3, our God shall come. Not the gods of materialism. Our God shall come back. The sovereign creator, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of our God shall come and shall not keep silent. Tonight, 
The ungodly world that's spinning out of control flexes its face in the face of God. And the Bible said because he does not knock us dead because when we sin we feel we have a license. Our God shall come. Somebody say amen. Some weary pilgrim ought to understand our God shall come. Some young Christian struggling in this rotten world, hear the word of God, our God shall come. Some aged sick person struggling to find medication, our God shall come. Some uh, defeated wife, you give your life and everything to make your marriage work and it's still failing, our God shall come. Some abandoned husband, our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous run about listen to me carefully we stockpile this earth is filled with weapons of mass destruction Russia has them the US has them uh, Iran claim to have it North Korea claiming to have some it's all over our God shall come and the day shall come when all of these shall explode together but the saints of the living God shall be caught up hallelujah Caught up from a rotten world. Caught up from this destructive mess. And he shall make a new heaven and a new earth. But even while we wait, he said, I want to give you a new heart. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Your world is spinning. But God says, I want to make you a new person. I'll take your sins. I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit inside of you. One that will help you to obey as a natural response of your love to the Lord God. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Listen to me. If you are a child of God, you don't have to be afraid of judgment. Can I say it another way? When the lawyer that you have is related to the judge who's going to try your case, when the judge is your friend, are you listening to me? Then you can go to court with less stress. There's only one lawyer that shall be available. Can I tell you about the other one? He's called the accuser of the brethren. Ah, he was cast out of heaven. The Bible said, how art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning. He said you were the anointed cherub that covered. You were perfect in all your ways. You want to read Isaiah and Ezekiel. And God said, you were perfect in all your ways until iniquity was found in you. And he was cast out of heaven. He lost his license. Hallelujah. I said, the accuser. He can't go back to the courts of glory. He can no longer practice law in heaven. He's been disbarred from the courts of glory. And so you have a lawyer who now sits at the right hand of God as your intercessor. His name is Jesus. Are you listening to me? He's on your side. And I thank God that he shall come back. And the day will come when he will say to the north, keep up. To the south, keep not back. But bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth the Lord is coming hallelujah no more sickness no more violence no more drug overdose no more spinning of our lives out of control the Lord is coming he's coming back he's coming back I said he's coming back he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Listen to me. He will say, gather my saints together. Gather. You ought to watch the use of the personal possessive pronoun. My. Gather my saints. Well, the only way to be God's saints, you ought to hear what John says in John 10 and verse 27. He said, my sheep will hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them life eternal I ask you tonight are you a sheep of Jesus Christ my sheep in this rotten world my sheep devil thought he could mess with my health but tell him the day is coming when there shall be no more sickness and the Lord God says he will say gather my saints together 
Those who've made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You want to watch that word? Covenant. Covenant simply means living life in agreement with God. Living life in agreement with God. But I hear you. I hear you. You say, preacher, I want to do that, but I don't have the power. I want to live my life in agreement with God, preacher, but I don't have the strength. And I thank God that he says, my grace is sufficient to keep you because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You want to say amen. If there's a weak soul here tonight, you don't have to be distressed and discouraged, despondent and deluded. He said his grace is sufficient to keep you because his strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so when our lives are spinning out of control, when our world is spinning out of control, he says, come unto me. Come unto me. I'll give you rest. I'll steer your life away from destruction. I'll guide your feet in the paths of righteousness. I'm done. I'm done. But hear the word. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For God is judge himself. He will swallow up death in victory. And the Lord will wipe away all tears from all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. You ought to say amen. amen. Whatever you've done, wherever you've wandered, I ask you tonight, crown him king of your life. Your world is spinning out of control in church and out of church. His grace and mercy will carry you through. Could we live in this moment all because of him? And we ought to thank him and praise him too for his grace and mercy. Listen to me. Mercy is something we don't deserve. Grace is pardon for sin. Grace is God's free gift. Grace says to the sinner, you deserve to die. But mercy says Jesus died in your place. His grace and mercy will carry you through. I'm done. One songwriter said, take the world, but give me Jesus. Because all his joys... All of the joys of this earth. I had a text earlier that says in 1 John 2, 15 to 17, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. Because all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, that's our carnal, natural desire. The pride of life, the things the devil shows us. The love of the world, he said, is not of the Father. And then verse 17 said, the world will pass away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. Are you listening to me? And Isaiah 40 and verse 8 says, The grass withereth and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Tell the devil, God's word will stand forever. Tell the devil, sin will not have the last word. Tell kings and governors and governments around the world there shall be a government on the shoulder of God and he shall reign in righteousness. And you ask me, preacher, how can I get there? His grace and mercy can fix you up. He'll give you a new heart and a new spirit. I'm done. I'm done. Please take the word, but give me Jesus. All his joys. All his joys. But a name. Are but a name. But his love. But his love. Abide in heaven. Abide in, in sickness. Heaven. 
and in death. You can rely on the love of God. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, the heart and depths of mercy. And depth of mercy. Oh, the length and breadth of the love of God. Oh, the length. Oh, the fullness and breath of redemption. Of love. He redeems the penitent. Oh, the he redeems the surrender. He redeems any sinner who will come to him. This is the pledge of endless life. Above. So take the world, but give me Jesus. Take the world. There's somebody here tonight. But give me Jesus. Your world is spinning out of control. Sweetest You're saying, God, I need your help to steady my life. With my Savior, I want you to watch over, over my life. So I can sing I though can pillars sing. roll. Would you stand with me? No Would you stand with me? Roll. Would you stand with me tonight? Oh, oh the heights the and depths of mercy. Depth of mercy. Oh, the length and breadth. Oh, the length of the love of God. And breadth of love. Yes, sir. Oh, the fool. I'm going to ask them to put a card in your hand while you're standing. The card, the first statement of the card says, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I didn't give you one last night, but I give you the card again tonight. I'm going to ask them to put that card in, in the hand of everybody. Put the card in the hand of everybody. You're standing tonight. And the fact that you're standing on your own two feet is a testimony of the goodness of God to you. He's coming. He's coming. We're going to sing the song again. Let's go yes, back. Lord. Let's go back to the beginning. Take the world. Take, Take the, the world. world. But give me Jesus. Give me this world Jesus. will pass. Because all, all his joy is about joy. a name. The love of it's God abides ever. Name. The first statement in the card says, I want God to be ready when Jesus comes. I want to be ready. My world is spinning out of control, but I want to be ready when Jesus comes in sickness or in sorrow with a broken marriage, broken dreams, when young people are turning to drugs and overdosing with opiate. Take the world, but give me Jesus. He wants to give you a new heart. The first statement. Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? If you don't have a pen, they'll get a pen or a pencil to you. The first statement in church or out of church. Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Do you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Then say, take the world, but give me Jesus. For he's the sweetest comfort of my soul. But give me Jesus. Listen to me tonight. Hear the word of God. The second one, don't resist the Holy Ghost. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism does not mean you're perfect. Baptism means you are surrendering your life to God. Baptism means you want the Lord God to take control of your life. You're surrendering your life so he can be the master of your life and the master of your destiny. His grace is sufficient. His mercy is everlasting. But the time is coming. Listen to me. The very first statement says you want to be ready. Well, there's a place he's prepared for you. Let not your heart be troubled, he says. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Feel the card out. Fill the card out. I I watch your news today, and a 14 year old young man and his three companions were studying. And they went for a swim in Lake Ontario, and they pulled his body out this morning, 14 years of age, with all of his future before him. He didn't know that yesterday would have been his last day. His parents may have great dreams and hopes and aspirations for him, but that's how fragile a life is. But we have this one moment in time 
and I ask you surrender while the mercy of God is calling to you our God shall come and shall not keep silent our God shall come and shall not keep silent he's coming I said he's coming he's coming he's coming back Feel the card out. Feel that card out. With a prayer in your heart. I wanna be a Don't wait until it's too late. He said, I'll give you a new heart. He said, the world is spinning out of control because the earth is defiled. Because we've transgressed his laws. We've trampled his commandments underfoot. We have sinned against him with apparent impunity. We want to cut God down to our size. Saul thought that he could choose how he obeys God. He could choose what he wants to do from what God says. And the word was to obey is better than sacrifice. I'm done. Prayerfully. Prayerfully, would you feel that card out? Take the world. Prayerfully. Me, Jesus. With a prayer in your heart, would you feel that card out? All is yours. Prayerfully. And I'm going to ask our attendants to collect the card from you. I want to hold your card in my hand and talk to Almighty God for you. If you're able to read through what's on it, feel it out. Take the earth the is world, defiled under the inhabitants. But give me Jesus. We've broken the everlasting covenant. All its joy. We've trampled his word beneath our feet. Our but he said, I want to give you a new heart. But is love and a new spirit. My sheep hear my voice. I will say to the heavens, bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Will you be among the number? Thank God by his grace you can be. By his grace you can be. Would you put all the cards in this one bucket? I want to be able to lift up cards bearing the names oh, of these wonderful the people the throne of grace and mercy where burdens are lifted and prayers are answered he wants to give us a new heart he wants to order our steps in harmony with his word but give me Jesus yes sweetest comfort of my soul comfort of my soul with my, With Savior, my Savior watching over me, I can sing me. though billows roll. I can sing while the world is spinning out of control. I can sing for our God is a mighty oh, deliverer. The sing the song, sing the song. And death oh, of the length and breadth of the love of God. Oh, the length and breadth oh, the fullness of, of redemption. Oh, the we have rebelled but God is redeeming those who come to him our heads are bowed oh Lord our God how excellent is your name in all the earth your glory is above the heavens your truth endureth to all generations your mercy knows no end and you've given your word. You've given your word and you cannot lie. You have said in St. John 6 and verse 37, Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Thank you, God. You've invited us to become your sheep. You've said to us, this world with its brokenness, with the death of young people, and old, rich and poor, will not last forever. You warned us that transgression is heavy upon the earth. 
you said it shall fall but bless God you have declared you've gone to prepare a new place for us and you will come back to receive us unto yourself but where you are there we may be also you've declared in your word our God shall come God there are beaten up wives and abandoned husbands and abandoned parents there are folk tonight sinking in the mire of a godless society but thank you there's hope in Jesus Christ there's a bomb in Gilead there's rest for the weary there's hope even for the hopeless I lift up this bucket God with the names of these your children every card here represents a life every card in this bucket have been signed by an individual. Almighty God, I pray, break the hand of the devil. Break the chains of sin. Give deliverance and mercy and redemption and hope. Take us home tonight. Watch over us while we sleep. Give us a good day tomorrow. God, I pray you'll bring peace to troubled heart. Put food on somebody's table. Bring healing to a broken marriage. Restore a wounded heart. A life drifting without control. Be the captain of our ship. Be the driver in the wrecked vessel of our lives. Restore someone tonight, Jesus. Bring someone back to the path of surrender and obedience to your will. Let the sun shine again in the path of a darkened soul. Lift up these cards. I lift up these names. I lift these people up to the mercy seat. You have never lost a battle. This weekend, God, we go have a baptism. Father in heaven, I don't know the mother or father of that 14 year old. I watch tears stained, grief stricken hearts on the television screen, but I pause to pray. I pause to pray. You'll comfort those who mourn. Across this land, youngsters are dying from an overdose of opiate bring sanity to a life spinning out of control but those who are watching tonight God give the wind a mighty voice climb through the airwaves climb down in somebody's home climb down in somebody's heart bring salvation Bring us back tomorrow evening. But put food on somebody's table. Provide a job for someone who's searching. Bring us back tomorrow night, we pray. With a blessing and a miracle is our asking in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. May the peace of Almighty God be with you. This world is May the love of God home. overshadow you. I'm May the spirit of the living God through. direct your feet in the path My of obedience. The blessing of God be over you and over your entire earth. family. It was a joy having you tonight. Love you with all my heart. From heaven. Would you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it was good to be here tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, like I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. We'll see you tomorrow evening then. Good night. Oh, Lord, you God bless you. Yes, I have no I friend. I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home. If heaven is not my home. I don't know, Lord, what would I do? Then, Lord, the angels beckon me. The angels yes, sir. beckon me. It's calling you. Heaven, As a home for you. Thank you for coming I tonight. The grace of God be with you. 
in I this look forward room. to seeing you tomorrow in night. Room. Bring a friend with you and come. There's a miracle with your name on it. We're going to talk about how to get God to do a miracle for you. We'll see you tomorrow evening. There's a miracle with your name on it. Be safe on your way home. The grace of God be with you. And I'll see you tomorrow evening. In heaven, open door. And I can't feel at home in this world.